Welcome to another edition of Bases and Balls with Guardians broadcaster Jim Rosenhaus with us. And Rosie, I guess let's start first of all. Guardians may have been the busiest team at the trade deadline and a couple of veterans left the team, a free agents that they brought in. And how does that affect the players in the locker room clubhouse? And I know you're in there each and every day. And, you know, we could debate, you know, who these players are in the trades and all that stuff. But I really wanted to go, since you visit with these guys a whole lot, how do the trades of their buddies, their friends affect the clubhouse? You know what, Ray, you hit on it right there. Buddies and friends. And the one uh, player I had a good conversation with about it was Stephen Kwan, who's a young major leaguer. Um, so for him, I mean, he's going to be here a while, you would think. It, it probably impacts him differently than it would be, say, an older veteran player who just wants to make the postseason. That's all they care about. Um, well, for Quan, I mean, he does too, but he also knows he'll be here a while. So if, if they do have to take a step back and, and not rebuild, but kind of reload, he'll be here for that. Um, but the, that personal side of it, and this was after Savali, Aaron Savali was traded, I asked him, I said, hey, you know, he's a little bit older than you. How did that impact you? And he says, it impacts me a lot because he became a good friend. And when when Stephen first reached the major leagues last spring, he said Aaron was really helpful in just the, the little pointers about major league life that would be helpful to him. And he, he always grateful for that. And then um, their wives, and in Kwani's case, a girlfriend, they, they became you know, their families became close. And so he said, from that standpoint, he, it's hard. Aaron Savali was a good friend of his. And of course, he was a good pitcher too. So they had a great chance to win on the days that he pitched. So, um, you know, I think it's it hits everybody differently. Um, some were upset. Um, others were, you know, hey, let's just go out and play the ball game and, and we'll figure it out. Um, which is what you know, there's guys in there you know there's going to be different reactions yeah you know rosie sometimes we say well it's a business of baseball but inside those clubhouses where you spend some time it, it, it's business but it's friendships it's camaraderie mm -hmm. it's the manager of tito leading these guys what did what did tito if anything have to say to the guys after a busy week by the front office well i, I think he he said look it, it's okay to be upset that's okay um, and this was at five o'clock for a seven o'clock game. But you can't get in the way of how you play. You still have if, if you go out there and, and don't play well because of that, that's not good. Um, you know, you still got to go out and and play to your best of your ability. And I know, you know, of all the times to get no hit, <laughs> have that happen Tuesday probably looked really bad. Um, but. It wasn't because of the trades, you know, it was their lineup, maybe not as strong because Bell wasn't in it and Josh Naylor was nursing a, an injury to his side. Sure. But they're still out there trying to get their hits and trying to score runs. And it just didn't work out that night. So it is, you know, I think that is Tito's message. Don't let the things off the field impact what you're doing on the field, because you still have that obligation to yourself to go out and play good baseball. Jim Rosenhaus with us, uh, bases and balls. Rosie, Ahmed Rosero, you and I touched on this last week, uh, traded from the team. So the shortstop position, Rokio is now up with the team. We have Arias there in a nice hit last night, and Freeman is there. The rest of the season, this next six, seven weeks, maybe beyond, is this a tryout for those three at shortstop, or how do you see that position the next six, seven weeks? I mean, it absolutely is, um, or at least it's an opportunity for them to play more and show what they can do. So if you want to call it a tryout, that yeah. Um, and it'll be interesting because um, Freeman hurt his shoulder, and, and hopefully it's not bad. If he's okay, then I, it'll be interesting to see if they keep Rokio up here because then they're going to be in a spot where it's going to be hard to get everybody playing time. Um, I know that they're kind of to see what Arias can do here. And, and he has swung the bat better since the day that, that Ahmed Rosario was traded. So, you know, maybe that is some some pressure off of him where he can just go out and, and play his game. And he's he swung the bat much better. Um, Freeman, I think they're trying to determine, is he a, an everyday shortstop or more of a utility player, which which could be his role? We'll see. 
Um, but I know they really like Rokio, and I think they're trying to balance, depending on this injury issue with Freeman, does Rokio stay and maybe not play a whole lot or every day, or does he go back to Columbus and continue developing because they love what he's done to develop. And every time he comes back, he's a little bit more prepared. And um, there's some excitement there too. You mentioned development and you and I have talked throughout this senior season, Tanner Bybee, Gavin Williams, Logan Allen, three of our rookie starters in the rotation. Let me ask you, cause you've seen every one of their innings. Have they even surprised you? Because I stepped back and I saw these guys coming up through Akron and such, and I, I'm somewhat surprised how effective they have been in the first half season of their careers in the majors. But what about you? Talk about these guys. Um, I don't know if surprise is the right word, but what's encouraging, Ray, is in some cases, not very many, they've started to face teams a second time. And, and you always wonder, you know, was that first time if they asked, was that just the unfamiliarity? But um, they're still doing very well. And then the other thing, too, um, there haven't been many bad outings. But when there are some where maybe they struggle a little bit, that next outing, they're on it and, and pitching well again. So their ability to make adjustments, both in-game and from start to start, has been very good. Um, their competitive nature has been great. Um, Williams and Bybee, I mean, they they get into a game and they're not letting it go. And uh, and even Logan Allen, too, uh, you know, a couple of times he's pitched deep in the games. Oh, boy, this, you know, he might not make it too much past the third. And then you look up and, and he's made it into the seventh. Um, so really, really encouraging in all three cases. You know, Gavin Williams, I saw him in person. What was it uh, last uh, week against Kansas City for that day game? really struggled there in that first inning. But then you look up and we're in the fifth, sixth inning and he was still pitching and being very effective. And that kind of tells you a little bit too, doesn't Rosie, that he kind of was able to put that first inning behind him and he moved on. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, of the three, he's had more command issues than, than any of the three. And um, he still, though, he's been able to work through them. Now, it's made his outings a little bit shorter because the pitch count climbs more quickly. But he's keeping the other team off the scoreboard. And, and he knows he's he's got to cut the walks a little bit. And he'll get there, I think, because the stuff's awesome. So um, it's really encouraging. And, and like what you said, you know, all right, slow start, maybe a little trouble in the first inning. But get through that and then see how far he can get the game. And he's been very good at that. Yeah, he's a bulldog for sure. Rosie, before I let you go, next six games at home. You got the White Sox this weekend and then the Toronto Blue Jays coming in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Little bit preview. The White Sox were big time sellers up until the trade deadline. Yeah. And they'll even be different uh, over the weekend in, in Chicago. Uh, I don't know what to expect. Um, they traded a lot of pitching, so who knows who's throwing. We know Mike Clevenger is throwing Friday night, so there's one. Um, but, yeah, they're a team in transition for sure. And the Blue Jays don't shortchange that series, right? They also play Thursday afternoon, so that's a four-gamer with the uh, with the Blue Jays. But um, that'll be a challenge. They're oof, uh, right in the thick of things in the American League trying to nail down a wild card spot and, and who knows, maybe even try and catch the Orioles. That, that's probably going to be tough, but that's a team that's very talented with high expectations. So um, that'll be a, a series to be sure. Rosie, as always, my friend, thanks for joining us. Looking forward to the calls this weekend and in the, into next week and appreciate the time with us each week here on WAKR. We'll do it again next week. You got it, Ray. Thank you.